Hello and welcome to this evening taste challenge. One of the few evening Monday nights that I don't have something to do in 2019, 2020. We have the Reserva Ocho from Bacardi, the eight year aged premium gold rum. The wooden cap and a rubberized stopper, not a real cork. This is a product that's been on the market since 1862. True story. It, it was a family reserve. They made it in 1862. It was for them. Then later, it was introduced as a public offering, but it was what the family drank. AJTLBZ, the first commentator. So, uh, Family reserve for over a century. Okay, so age eight years. It's from Puerto Rico. It's a beautiful bottle. Uh, the, the youngest rum was barreled in 2010. And I bought this in 20. Um, let's see, I bought this in 2019. But it's from the 2018 gift pack. All right, so about $70. You get a humidor, cedar box, glass front, snaps, beautiful box. I'm not going to go get it, but um, Walmart still has some. They're $65 this, this past year, so they dropped it five bucks. So 70 bucks, you got the Ocho, Grand Reserva Ocho, and the Grand Reserva Diaz, the 10-year aged. But I got it half price. After the holidays, they were just trying to close them out. I ought to go back over there and check, but I don't need any more stuff. But um. So I got it for 35 bucks, 35. My father was saying, uh, that sounds like a great deal. You ought to go buy it. <laughs> he doesn't even drink anymore. I said, yeah, I got to buy it. All right, beautiful product. Look at that. Would it get that dark after eight years? In a, in a, it might do the add coloring. I don't know. They don't have to disclose that in a room. They might, they might not. Now I love the regular, but the regular Bacardi Gold to me is great. I love it, and it's about fifteen dollars here. Now in other places, it's cheap. FACP monitoring. You always get those great deals. Wish I had that luck. Can't explain it, but um, I like to get them and I jump on it. You know. So here's the Ron Pantalba Gold. It says imported from the Caribbean islands, which islands? I don't know. It could be a number of islands. They just get different shipments in from various islands. Could be uh, Antigua and Barbuda, right? Um, Anguilla. Who knows? St. Lucia. Bottled by Wide World Importers, Frankfurt, Kentucky. Also known as Buffalo Trace. Ha, ha, ha. Now, this is $6.99 a liter. If you want to call this a challenge, go ahead. But it isn't any challenge. I mean, it's going to be blind. Do I expect the romp on top of the hold up? No. Uh, when I did Fandango Friday, if you watched that one, that was last week. It got killed. I mean, it was a joke. It's dark also. Well, it's gold. It's gold. Just like this, the bottle says gold. Is it colored? I mean, probably six ninety nine a liter. You think it's aged long? Doesn't smell like it. Doesn't taste like it. So the Bacardi is darker. No shot. Now the next rum taste challenge is going to be um, Bacardi Grand Reserva Diaz. Now that one's not old like the Ocho. I don't know how long it's been on the market. I can't find that out on their website. Good while, um, maybe a decade, two, 20 years. It's aged, uh, and Bacardi kept changing the names of some of these products, so it might be longer than two, 20 years. But um, the youngest one in there was from 2008. I bought it in 2018. So that means, now remember with liquor, you got to go with the youngest liquor in the blend. So with this Ocho, the youngest is from 2010. So it could be older 
ones from maybe the 1990s that were aging in a barrel. I just don't know. Uh, the Ron Pantava I bought last year, 2019, and I'm sure the youngest whiskey in there, I'm sure the oldest whiskey, listen to me, whiskey, the oldest rum is probably from 2017. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not, it's young, it's young, it's unaged, or it's practically unaged. You say, well, why would somebody buy, why would somebody buy Ron Pantalba? Oh, well, because they want to spend the most minimum amount of money possible and get a rum to make daiquiris or whatever they make. Maybe to make uh, eggnog or something. I mean, if you bought Borden eggnog and mixed it with Ron Pantalba, it's probably fine. Borden filed for bankruptcy today. Another one. Another one in trouble. They say people don't drink milk like they used to. I I still drink it. I got this gallon here that's going to go bad. But um, people tell me, but I'm sensitive to lactose. I'm okay, I'm not, and I'm not sensitive to wheat. Now, I'm not talking about other people. It's strange, though, that in the last 25 years, you got all these people that got this lactose intolerance and gluten problems. Do you remember that in the 1970s and 80s? I sure don't. Maybe it was a thing, but um, I just don't remember that. I think something's wrong with the world. <laughs> you say, you think? <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, this is obviously the Ron Pantalba. How do I know? I'm not looking. I'm not. It has a strong... like young, unrefined liquor aroma, like just liquor, you know, like some kind of spirits. This one just happens to be made from uh, molasses. Uh, do I pick up wood? Yes. It's a little wood barrel. It's not bad. It smells on its own merits. Now, when you do it in isolation, it's okay. You think, wow, I got a good deal for $6.99 a liter. Wow, what a deal. And I agree. I think I did get a good deal. And the white is even better. Their white really can go toe to toe with the Bacardi Superior. Not, well, it can compete. It's not going to win, but it can compete. It's kind of like the Saints. They competed against the Vikings, sort of. <sighs> Going out there all like uh, lethargic and in a daze. It's like, what's wrong with this team? Y'all that um, upset that you didn't get a, a week off that you're going to pout and get pushed around by the Vikings at 10 and 16? You deserve to lose. Oh, man, this one is so rich. Mm -hmm. No use closing my eyes anymore. What's up, Ron, says Travis Childers. Just doing a rum taste challenge. Mr. Ron stays with the sweet. I do stay with some sweet deals. Get expensive rum for half price. Get cheap rum for cheap. <laughs> I, how do I even describe this? This is so elevated in its aroma. You can't even describe it. I can't. Not adequately. I can tell you, I don't know. You got to buy it. I mean, I don't know. Go to Walmart and pay $65.99. That's a little pricey, but you got to remember now the regular price is 30 bucks for one bottle. The 10 year age is 40 bucks. That's 70 right there. That's if you buy it off the shelf, but I got it for 35 for both with the with the case. <laughs> Was that the best liquor deal I ever got? Uh, probably. It's so rich and deep. It's like old wooden furniture, you know what I'm talking about? Like you know old shop somewhere like really rich wood and lacquer and uh, you say but the booze the booze no there's no booze in there in the aroma it's sweet there's a little sourness like you know like sweet and sour sauce i was looking at that ciroc brandy vs brandy i think that's the only one they make is vs the vs brandy ciroc i saw that at walmart it's like 30 dollars I know everybody drank, you know, the Ciroc vodka. Everybody knows about Ciroc vodka, vodka, vodka. But I'm not too much for vodka. 
they all taste dull to me. Not bad, just dull, like nothing to it. But um, the Ciroc VS brandy, I was thinking, is from southern France. It's not cognac because it got to be from cognac France. That's central west France. But I was thinking, well, I'd like to try that Ciroc, but then I have to do the uh, California brandy from Corbell. Okay. Booze. But, you know, the booze is the booze. Is, the booze has faded. Now it's just wood, wood, wood barrel. <laughs> and the other one. Lactose and gluten intolerance all new in the last 20 years. I don't know if it's all new in the last 20 years. I'm saying I never heard about it before 20 years ago. What beer should I be stockpiling for World War III? Keystone Ice? That would be a good one to have for World War III. Mr. Trump's War. You say, but what about the Democrats? Okay. They had all theirs, too. Both parties are capable of idiocy. I'm not picking on a party. Hams and deer meat. Hmm. Now, my uncle used to get that deer meat. He'd go hunting all the time and then have it blended with pork and have the sausage. That was OK on its own. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> yeah. Huh. A lot of wood. Would you like to hear about the wood? It's just a lot of barrel. You say, well, why is it picking up so much wood? Where's the sweetness? Where's the savoir faire? Where's the elegance? Yeah, for $6.99 a bottle. You're glad you're picking up the wood. <laughs> There's no off flavors or anything. It's just kind of basic. Well, makes sense, doesn't it? Hands, I like a good call. Yeah. Backstrap all day. Okay. Now. Uh -huh. Pepper, spices, cinnamon, nutmeg, some mellow wood barrel, charcoal, even some mint, peppermint or menthol. Nice and okay. Now uh, let's see what they're saying on the website about it. Cocktail time. Well, I don't want to read about the cocktails. Tasting notes. It takes eight years for a batch of Bacardi Reserva Ocho to mature, but patience is rewarded by its distinctive refined flavor with notes of prune, apricot, nutmeg and vanilla now see i said spices i don't know about the nutmeg and vanilla but prune mm. see now i would say dates and figs apricot mm. apricot I'm thinking of marmalade, like the orange peel. I don't know, but it's pretty rich. It's got a lot of character. You say, well, I don't, I don't want to pay more than $10 for rum. But you ain't going to get this kind of character. <laughs> I mean, I paid $17.50 for each bottle. That was half price. Now, huh. I guess Ron Patalpa has its place. It's kind of like on the level of Taka Vodka. I mean, I drank the Taka. It's fine. I drank the Taka 100. It's better. Got more body. The 100 proof. The red label. But it's on that level. Kind of like if you bought vodka, you say, I want something cheap. That'll work. Get Taka. Or you can go right now and get the Taka uh, King Cake Vodka. 
That's a liqueur. It's only 35 proof. King cake. I don't know what does it taste like. King cake, I guess. <laughs> uh, you can get Crown Rus vodka. That probably fine. That's probably fine. It's on the level like this. Uh, what about Dobra? Well, I never had Dobra vodka. Or what about Skull? I never had Skull vodka. I had Skull rum, and I had Skull dry white. The gold and the dry white. My experience, most good rums are between 15 and 25. That sounds right. What kind of, I enjoy Gosling's rum around $16. Yes, I saw that at Albertsons for $15.99. It might have been $14.99. Whoa. The black, the black Gosling's. I'd love to try that super dark thing. Those black rums are the best, like the rock, the Myers is. Everybody calls it Myers, but it is actually Myers is. Uh, that's about 18 bucks. I got, I went to Dornax and they had a liter bottle for 18. That was a deal. And I went at a glass bottle. That was a jewel that my daughter was like, oh, this is so good. I was like, no joke. It's a little too woody maybe, but it's good. Um, what If this was a whiskey, what would it be called? Oh, it'd be called um, trying to think of a whiskey that would be comparable to it on price point versus flavor. Guess something like benchmark old number eight McAfee's benchmark. McAfee's a little bit more expensive. That doesn't make sense because you're not going to get a liter of McAfee's for no $6.99. Excuse my bad English. Uh, well, maybe how about McCormick's? I saw McCormick's blended whiskey for <laughs> it was like $5.99 for a liter. Yeah, something like that. It's not bad. People say, oh, McCormick's, it's terrible. It isn't terrible. It's just basic. And uh, Canadian whiskey would be something like, I don't know. Can I get a Canadian whiskey this cheap? <laughs> I don't think I ever have. Well, I got the Gibsons for $9.99, the huge handle bottle. Glass, beautiful, too, with a cork. Real cork, too, not this rubberized stuff. But, I mean, that was such a strangely low price. That's, like, beyond the pale of any reasonable expectation that anybody would have. Because the people in Canada, and even in the United States, they're telling me, nah. You get a handle bottle of Gibson's, it's 65 bucks. Canada, maybe 55 here. It's not $9.99. My only problem is I didn't like the taste. <laughs> uh well, maybe the Northern Lights. Okay, you can get the Northern Lights for $15.99. The handle, plastic, beautiful plastic bottle. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, well, I'll tell you right now. Um, if you want a great Scotch whiskey, blended Scotch whiskey for cheap, I'm talking about cheap, and it tastes really good. Oh, so very good. 100 Pipers. You cannot go wrong with 100 Pipers. Or Clan McGregor. But what I say 100 Pipers is better. That is from a company called Shivas Brothers. They make Shivas Regal. I think 100 Pipers is better than Shivas Regal. That's age 12 years. Sorry, but that's the way I feel about it. 100 Pipers only age 3 years. They have much smokier whiskey in it. What is that? What, which one makes the smoke? The Isla? I don't know much about Scotch. But... Uh, the hundred pipers, boy, that's a winner. Ron, are you retired? I wish I had this much time to sample brews and spirits. I am retired from teaching high school. I retired almost eight years ago, but I do have a job. <laughs> so I'm not exactly retired. I'm semi-retired. I'm like the Don in the Godfather 
I'm semi-retired. The Don is semi-retired. If you got something to say, say it to Michael. Oh. This thing is beyond the belief. I like it better than the Grand Reserve of Diaz, to tell you the truth. And that's a 10-year. I don't know what it is about the eight-year. It's all kind of like fruit flavor. I don't even like fruit. There's all kind of fruit and caramel and rich sugar flavors. Oh, it is just dynamite. Ooh, ooh. Boy, they hit the nail on the head with this one. I mean, are there better rums in the world? Well, I mean... <laughs> They got people paid five, six thousand dollars for bottles of rum. I'm sure it's better than this. Couldn't say, never had it, ain't buying that. I went to the Sazerac House in New Orleans. They had blended Scotch whiskey. Fifty year old age, age fifty years. It was five thousand dollars for one bottle. Mm-hmm. It was called The Last Drop, 1969 Vintage. 5000 5, bucks. Now, would they take a, a, a best offer? They might. If you go in Sazerac House and say, look, uh, I'll give you $3,900 for that bottle, they might, they might bite. They might tell you, ha ha, you crazy. You're paying 5000 you ain't getting it. It's in a glass case. Now, do they have other cheaper... Spirits at Sazerac House. It's a museum too, by the way. Interactive museum. You get to study the products and taste them <laughs> while you're there. And it's totally free, by the way. But of course, they want you to go into the gift shop. But now, um, sure, you can get Buffalo Trace. That's $29. At the, no, it's cheaper than that. You can get Weller. Well, you can get all the stuff Sazerac makes, you know, Cane Run, um, Herb Saint. It's a nice place. I mean, it's really, and they got people in there buying, 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 baby. That 100 pipe of scotch is around $20 a bottle. $20 a bottle? Oh, no. You can go to Mathurin's and get it for $9.99. Or is it $10.99? Or you can go to International Market in Metairie for eight ninety nine. But uh, you didn't hear me say that. <laughs> All right, Founders Breakfast out in pork chops. I could live with that. I could live with that. Breaded pork chops and Founders Breakfast out. I could live with that. So spicy, so wonderful. If I had to drink that. Grant that Reserva Ocho every day, and that would be the only rum I could ever have. I'd never get tired of it. I can assure you of that. Never, 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 never. Yeah, FACP monitoring. If you get the 100 Pipers, I bet you're going to love what I'm saying. You're going to agree with me. Now, Sir Malcolm, it's about the same price. But see, Sir Malcolm is more like grain and bread dough. I'm not against grain and I'm not against bread dough, but I would rather taste that smoke, like smoked pork. You know, like you drink the whiskey, it's like smoked pork. I looked it up online and that's what it said. No, it's not $20. Uh-uh, no way. Unless it's the handle bottle and that's too high. When dixie has the big size bottle of 100 pipers and it can't be more than $16.99. Matherns, yeah, they've got it right on the shelf. And they sell it, too. A girl told me, she said, they come in there, they buy it every week. <sighs> Some old guys, you know, coming in here to get my 100 pipers, you know what I mean? <laughs> Once or twice a week. You know, that's, they're going to buy that. You know, they're going to, I've been drinking 100 pipers since 1963 when I was 18 years old. And I ain't stopped yet. Well, let's see. They couldn't have bought it in 63 because it didn't hit the market till 65. Haha. <laughs> well, okay. 
you get the point. <laughs> um, my friend Davis said another one of those old man bourbons is like, uh, or or whiskeys is a uh, old charter. He said, yeah, I go to these places. I got these guys like 69 years old with their noses red. And they come in there, I'm getting my hundred pipers. Uh, you know, they uh, probably are writers for a modern drunkard magazine. But that's what they do. That's their thing. Hunter pipers. Uh, old charter, old charter, you know, old man uh, bourbon. Ron Pantalba. Oh, yeah. Ooh. It's not that bad, but it ain't that good. It's. Well, it lives up to the 80 proof. It's got 80 proof and it feels like it. Yikes. It's like taking wood and rubbing it across your tongue against the grain. Yikes. That's a man's rum. Got to be a man to drink that. Or stupid. Or cheap, 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 like a little chicken. Ronald. Ronald. Ronnie. Uh, Ronald, Ronnie, Ron. Ronnie S. says, hello there, freedom lover. Oh, man, people are on my case today because I was making anti-war statements. It's like, how dare you oppose war, you idiot? Don't you know war is what makes us free and safe? And, oh. and I was like, no, I don't know that. All right, anyway, so, so much for this so-called taste challenge, uh, which it wasn't, but it was interesting, I guess. Um, would I recommend Ron Pontalba? Yes, if you don't have high expectations and you don't wanna pay more than $6.99 plus tax, it's fine. If you're cool with $6.99 plus tax for a liter and your expectations are not too stringent, you got it, it's working. But now, if you really want to step up your game and try something that's like literally good, not arguably good, like you don't have to make excuses for it. Like, well, if you're trying to save money, no, this one is the real deal. This is like the real deal. You want to get your ocho. Just look for that number eight, Bacardi and that number eight, and that big red bat. That's what you want in your life. <laughs> Picked up a bottle of Old New Orleans Cajun Spice Rum the other day. A little pricey at $20 a bottle, but good taste in rum. Hmm. Probably like that. Nickel Plated 380 says, war sucks. By the way, when did you begin drinking? Uh, actually, about age 26 years old. I and a lady... Well, <laughs> we better not go into that. But uh, we would drink dessert wine. She liked to drink, uh, oh, any of those things. Like if I would get Fairbanks Port, Madeira, Cream Sherry. Oh, she was down for that. Not a lot. We didn't drink a lot. Just like every now and then a little bit. Oh, she was down for that. So, um, but we were just fooling around with the wine. You know, we didn't know anything about it. We just liked it because it was strong and it was sweet. Like it had 17, 18% alcohol, meaning it had a lot of body and character. You know, like the Taylor Port or the Fairbanks or the, uh, well, we didn't drink Sheffield. You can't get that in this parish. You can get it at Metairie. Then around 27, actually, I was 27 years old. I said, let me try beer because everybody's always talking about beer, beer, beer. I'm so sick of hearing about beer. So I started drinking it as a project in February 96, a project. And I'm still working on the project. So um, and then around that time, I tried different. They didn't have the Internet like we have today where you could do online hangouts. And all. So I tried um, vodka. K and B vodka, Cats and Best Off vodka. So I tried Cats and Best Off, which is made by Buffalo Trace. I mean, that's the same people that make it. And then, uh, but they don't, that company went out of business. So they, they got bought out by uh, Rite Aid, 
who got bought out by who? CVS. And then um, I tried the Taka Vodka, and uh, it was all right. And then I retried it last year. It was still all right. And uh, I did different spirits over the years, but not on air. Like I tried the Crown Russ Vodka. Had a piece of charcoal floating in there. But um, it was okay. It really, honestly, it wasn't bad. I wouldn't uh, run out and go looking for it. And so on, you know, so on. Sonia gave me a bottle of uh, uh, Sazerac rye. And I said, ooh, boy, I could get into whiskey with Sazerac rye, you know. I could, I could get into this. So I, I just played around with it. I wasn't serious into spirits at all, liquor, until about three years ago. And uh, four years ago. And then um, beer, I was really into that because I wanted to look at brands. I was like saying, I'm so interested in different beer brands. When did this come out? What's the story behind it? Like, why do people like it or dislike it? What happened to it? No, like fascinated by Schlitz in particular. So uh, in Dixie beer. So that's what started all that and continues that. Right on with your words earlier, says Jack. Oh, thank you. Picked up a bottle of old. No oh, I read that already. Do you prefer red or white wine? Well, kind of depends. I like red wine. Some of it's a little too chewy, like the Cabernet Sauvignon. It's like you're eating the wine. I like white wine. And I like the blush, which is like the hybrid, half red, half white. I guess, Ronnie, I like them all. You know, I just like them. Red wine, white wine, middle, I don't care. If you couldn't live in Louisiana, where would you like to live? That's a bad question because I would hate that. Um, probably Miami, Florida. Because it's always warm and they got a lot of teams you can follow like the Miami Hurricanes, Florida International Panthers. Then you got your pro teams like the Dolphins and the um, Heat. But I'm more interested in college basketball. You got Florida International, Miami, Hurricanes, college basketball, even NAI, NAIA teams like St. Thomas. And you got um, Florida Memorial University. Yeah, I'd probably go there or uh, Houston, Texas, because you always have teams to watch there, right? Thank you. Texas Southern, Houston, Rice, all those college football teams. I'd be living at the college football stadiums. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, Houston's weather is similar to ours, a little cooler, but similar. So um, you got the Astros. I don't really like that stadium too much. That's another video. But um, I'd probably go a lot. Uh, yeah, I mean, Houston or Miami. How about that? I had some good rosé the other night. Oh, yeah, that, I love rosé wine. Mr. Ron Disson, Tampa. No, I like Tampa, St. Petersburg, Tampa. I would live there, go see the Rays all the time, South Florida uh, Bulls. I'd buy South Florida season tickets for football. I would get the Tulane season tickets again, but they want to play all these Thursday night games. I'm tired on Thursday night. I don't want to go to a football game, be up till midnight, one o'clock in the morning. And I got to work the next day. Oh, no, I don't think so. Sorry, Tulane. Y'all got to go back to Saturday. I When I used to have season tickets, I always play on Saturday, Saturday afternoon. Usually it was Saturday afternoon at two o'clock. People complain, but I liked it. Miami's cool, but a little expensive. I call it the tropical Manhattan. Hmm, yeah, it could be true. Did you see that my Michigan State Spartans kicked? I did see that. 
I did see that. Yeah. As soon as I saw it, I said, woof. Boy, University of Michigan, they about the only thing they can do these days is get beat. Talking about the Wolverines. Look at the Wolverines getting in their butts whipped. Tampa Bay area is pretty nice. I always liked it. Houston is a real good pick. Great music scene. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot of strip malls and subdivisions. Okay. I always say that. Houston is where you want to go to see a bunch of strip malls and subdivisions. But it's got a lot of cool stuff too, I guess. I like subdivisions. I wouldn't, I don't like living in one. <laughs> wouldn't want to live in one. I like strip malls, but uh, I do ridicule Houston a lot. But I do like it. You know what I mean? I'll pick, I say negative things about Houston more or less constantly. But um, I would live there. I would like living there. And um, Beaumont, too. Yes. Orange, Texas. Yes. All those places. See, we go to Houston a lot because it's five and a half hours from here. It's right on Interstate 10. So it's just like a boring drive. But. I like Houston's beer selection, their liquor selection. I could drink a lot of, I meant to say I could taste a lot of uh, different products out there. Um, but then Miami's pretty fascinating too with all that Caribbean um, experience. So anyway, you asked a question, there's your answer. Uh, all right, so the Reserva Ocho is the clear winner. But then we knew that when this started, it's a beautiful, I mean, look how pretty. Oh, I hate to run it. Oh, I won't be running out of it soon. The next rum taste challenge is going to be the lowly, homely little Ron Pontalba versus the, the Grand Diaz. Grand Reserva Diaz, 10 year age. Oh, yeah, that's going to be a real challenge. Oh, wow. Yikes. But then we'll go back to basics with um, more comparable challenges like Castillo gold, Skull gold, and Aristocrat gold. Those would be fair, much fairer. I've been thinking about Castillo gold lately. Sometimes I go to bed at night and I lay in bed and I think, I might want to get up out of the bed and just go taste some Castillo gold. But of course I don't do it. <laughs> Bring back Ron Rio. Yeah, that's coming back, unfortunately. But I have to buy another white rum. And I got to think long and hard about that. Enjoy Carbach, Carbach from Houston. Carbash. You mean Carbach. Oh, we love Carbach Brewery. That was fascinating. The price was good. My friend David was just like having a great time. He was just like, oh, it's like he was like in a, in a beer wonderland. And he loved the tour. I did too. And not as much as he did though. But I think Carbock beers are solid. I've had people tell me they're not that good. I was like, do you hate beer or what? I mean, because every Carbock beer I ever had, I think, has been just so delightful. I don't know why people have this like embedded hatred toward Carbock. Oh, right. Because it got bought out by him as a bush and bill. Thank you. Yes, I reviewed the Castillo Gold Spice Rum recently. I've never had the Spiced. I'm very familiar with the label, Black Label. But uh, I'd be curious to try. I've never had a Spice Rum. FAC pieces. And St. Arnold, of course. We went to the St. Arnold Brewery last year. We were so disappointed in the tour. The tour was a fiasco. The brewery's solid, though. They make wonderful beers. St. Arnold makes top-notch beers. We drank the beers. We love the beers. Then we got into a big argument about the baseball game. I told my friend David, I said, why do you go to games? You don't like baseball? Aside from, you know, like liking the concept of it, but to sit there and watch a game, you don't like it. So why did you go on the trip? He just wanted to get away. I said, well, I came to see the game, in fact. So that turned into, but it was, it ended up kind of good because, but it, it was a big, 
Oh, I was throwing a fit. That's another story. I mean, I was throwing a fit. I was so angry. Are you done with the light beer challenges? Yes. I couldn't take it anymore. I was like, I'm just going to drink the beer. I can't. I can't stand sitting here comparing two light beers. It's so depressing. I'm having a St. Arnold, Texas winter IPA now. Oh, I'd love to find that. Picked it up for $8.99 at Rouse's on Power Boulevard. Hmm. Actually, Spice Rum has taken over the gin fans. Hmm. I've only tried their lawnmower beer. It's a great beer, but but that's but they make so many wonderful beers. I mean, St. Arnold makes the, those reserve beers, the uh, those barrel aged beers, the, even the pumpkin beer. Everything, everything they make is good. Oh yeah, that company is just so. How about bringing back the ice beer challenges? Commerce Aussie, price, price, price. Right. Well, the problem with the ice beer challenges, I ran out of ice beers. We only get a select few in Louisiana. They're all good, but we don't get many. So, I mean, our, the Summer Pills is awesome. Yeah, I love that that product. Oh, well, so another challenge down in the books. Been going on for 40 minutes and more. So Ice House gets my vote. It does get mine. My neighbor across the street loves that Ice House. When I buy her a 12-pack of Ice House, she's like, woo it's on now. She's so excited. We get the 12 packs of bottles here. The brown bottles. That's what we get. And she, and it's, it's not even $9. It's a, it's a primo product. Ice house is primo. You know what I mean? That's Kanye. At 10, five, a key. We can't lose on this deal. We're going to make 75 mil. 75 million. That's serious money, Frank. Okay, have a good night.